How you doing? So listen, I had an amazing day today. Played golf with my little brother. We started texting this morning, talking about golf. Since he's a professional golfer, it's easy for him to talk about golf. What's up, Jeremy Jackman? How you doing, man? So, like, I realized, and I've realized it many times, that that we all have this programming. Don Miguel Ruiz talks about it in his book, The Four Agreements. He talks about, what's up, Jim Weaver? Frank Sagasta, how you doing, coach? So, you know, he talks about the programming that we have. He talks about the programming of the human in, in his book, The Four Agreements. And a lot of people talk about that. A lot of people talk about how, you know, when, what is it, the average, uh, now this is years ago when I used to, you know, do sales training, talked about the average, the average, um, 18 year old had heard the word no like 20,000 times or something crazy um, but yet they heard the word yes like a couple of thousand times it's an extreme difference right and I, I'm, I don't remember what the numbers are but it's extreme and and so we go into adulthood expecting no expecting the worst that could possibly happen, expecting bad things and not expecting the good things. And that continues to grow in adult, as an adult. It continues to grow. It continues to go in that direction of, you know, you know, it's like the old saying, you know, I, I, I used to hear this, um, what's up, Brad French? How are you, bro? I used to, I used to hear this saying, um, that, Unrealistic expectations are premeditated resentments. What's up, Jack Gotchi? They're not premeditated resentments, man. Like you gotta set some freaking you gotta set some unrealistic expectations. You gotta you gotta get your game on, man. You gotta get you gotta get this right. Grant Cardone talks about that all the time. You gotta get this right. You gotta get your thinking right. You got to change the way that you're viewing yourself. If somebody taught you that, you know, if you get a job and you work, you know, 40 hours a week or, hey, man, go the extra mile and work 50 hours. And geez, if you really want to make it work 60 hours, like I only I, like that's a part time job to me. 60 hours. <clears throat> How do you get anything done in 60 hours? I, I don't even so like, you know, but I, I didn't always have that mindset. I didn't always have that mindset of, you know, like maybe, maybe there were some really, really good intentioned people in my life teaching me what they were taught. And maybe as a result of that, as a result of that, I was taught the same stuff. And maybe, just maybe, it was wrong. See, the problem is, is we are so conditioned by other people, by, by you know, moms and dads and, and teachers and siblings and, 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 you know, ministers and preachers and priests and rabbis and, and, and you know, everything under the sun Teachers, you know, I mean, our kids, kids spend the majority of their day throughout the school year, at least, with a teacher. Well, what are they being taught? What, what kind of a, what kind of a, an ingrained um, belief system are they being taught? Are they being taught what that teacher's parents taught him or her? I mean, it makes sense, right? It makes sense that, that like, 
I, I don't know. It's just, you, you got to get control of that. You got to, you've got to realize that anything is possible. Anything. You got to change your programming. What are you thinking? What kind of conversations are you having with yourself? You know, I was talking to my brother today and he's an amazing golfer. I mean, absolutely amazing. Tiffany, hey, Charlie Joyner, Joel Rawson, how you doing? Samuel J. Sneed is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, I was, I was telling him, like, dude, like, he is a, he's literally a professional golfer, like, for real. Like, he has a PGA card and everything. Like, he's a professional golfer. He's unbelievably, unbelievably talented. And, and yet, he's never, he's never won a massive major tournament. He's never, you know, and, and, and I was, uh, what's up, Brian Sherman? How you doing, man? So, I was like, dude. Dude, dude, because he was, he was like, I, I could see him getting emotional and angry and getting, you know, as, as the day went on. He shot two under on the back nine, mind you. He shot a 70, I think, he, he, he didn't do as well on the front nine, but like he shot a 76, I think, overall or something. And he was, you know, that's not good for him. For me, if I shot a 76, man, I, I, I'd, I'd take out a full-page ad in the newspaper to brag about that. But, you know, like, like you know, I could see him getting really, and I said, dude, you're, you're having the wrong conversation with yourself, man. You're, you're, you're having really negative conversations with yourself. So think about, you got to think about what conversation are you having with yourself? When you go to take on a, a new business, you know, I know a lot of people who are MLMers that are that are stuck. I, hey, man, I'm with you, bro. I shot a 99. <laughs> I was like, yes, I broke 100. <clears throat> I may have had a couple of foot wedge shots in there, though, that I didn't count. But, you know, like, like <laughs> if I <laughs> I'm broke I, I'm telling you, man, I used to shoot in the low 80s, high 70s a long time ago when I played a lot. That's the first time I played in two years. But, you know, when 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 you're having a conversation, like I know a lot of people who have these um, home-based businesses. They have, you know, they, they have, they're in a, a network marketing business or, and, and they're, they're literally most of the time, I know some people that are just paralyzed by fear. They're paralyzed by fear, the fear of knocking on a door, the fear of picking up the phone and calling somebody that you don't know, the fear of reaching out to somebody that you don't know, the fear of developing relationships with people that can help you, the fear, you know, all of those fears. And then they go out and they, they, they say, well, I put in, you know, I put in freaking 100 hours this week and I didn't get anything. Well, of those 100 hours, how many of those hours were actually spent reaching out to people? Actually, you know, talk, hey, Ermilo, how you doing, bro? So, Christine, how are you? And, and so, you know, how many of those hours are actually spent doing things that are going to make, make you profitable, that are going to make you money? You know, and, and a lot of people are, are, are living in that fear of, of the conversations they're having. It's literally conversations that you're having in your head. What are you saying to yourself? What are you saying to yourself? Really think about that. What are you saying to yourself? Are you saying things like you're like, I'm, I'm capable, I'm, I'm, I'm worthy. There's one. Are you worthy? Are you really worthy? Do you really truly feel like you're worthy? Seriously, think about that. And I don't mean say, yes, I'm worthy in an arrogant way. I'm saying, are you worthy? Are you really, really worthy? Because the only way you're going to be worthy of massive success is once you feel worthy. Once you feel worthy, you've got to change the conversations you're having with yourself. That internal conversation is important to our success. It, I don't think there's anything more important, bro, at all. 
Christine, thank you. It's good to see you on here. Zoe, 100% agree. Fear can be a bugger to get past. You know, it, it, but it's, it's like anything else. Hey, Ivan, how you doing? It's like anything else. The only way you get past it is to do it. You got to take the action, right? You got to take the action. So if you're not taking action, that fear just literally piles up on itself and makes it worse and worse and worse. As time goes on, that fear grows and grows and grows. And the only way to get past it is to take the action. You know, we, we lived in Las Vegas and, and we went out to the Grand Canyon um, the Grand Canyon West like six times, I think, five or six times. And they have that giant glass skywalk that you can walk out on this glass and look down. And like it's, it's I forget, the, the it's like 4,500 feet or something insane. Like it's a lot. It would definitely do the job if you fell. Trust me, you'd, that'd be it. And my wife is terrified of heights. I mean, like paralyzingly so. And and so you got to jump out of the plane, and that, right? So so I'm like, I I want to go out here and see this, and she's like, I can't do it. And I'm like, you can do it. It like this thing will hold. They they talk about like it. It'll you can stack like seven Boeing seven forty sevens on. I don't know where they came up with that, but. But like you can stack like seven of those on on this glass skywalk and it it'll it'll hold it right. Fear was my biggest obstacle. It's the only way to get the only way to get over it is to take massive action. That's right. So so we we walk out or I go out on my wife's like literally having a panic attack. My my daughter my little one just walks out just above. She's like you know jumping around and. And she's like, she no fear in the world, no care, nothing. Like she, and literally, you can see forty five hundred feet or whatever it is straight to the, the 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 floor of the Grand Canyon, and and so we walk out there, and my wife is like holding onto the rail, and she's like, literally, she's freaking out, and and I'm not making fun of her; it's a real fear for her, and so. So she, she gets out there and she goes and, and you go around like this, this semicircle, this like horseshoe and it's all the way, if you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. So she gets, she goes all the way around. Now she will not go out to the, well, she ended up though. She, she like scooted across, like she was freaking out. And there's obviously a bunch of other people, but I'm like, come on, let's move out to the edge and, and get our picture taken by the photographers. And she's like, no. And I go, come on, it'll be fun. And they do it at an angle where it looks like you're, you know, the, you see the can, canyon floor beneath you. And, um, hey, Kevin Bacon, what's up, bro? James Manville, how you doing? So, so, um, so she, we go out there. And, and that was like our very first trip out there. And she was literally terrified. And, and so, but she, I, I convinced her to, to go all the way around. And Abigail was, it was, she's just brave. She does, she fears nothing. I mean, nothing. That little girl does not fear a thing. And so we go all the way around and we go back in and she, you know, Jill's like, Wow, I, that was phenomenal. I'm so glad I did that. So the next trip out, I'm like, hey, let's go back out on the glass skywalk. She's like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm like, come on. You've already done it. You know you're not going to fall. So we go back out. She's holding on to the railing again. And this time she moves to the outer edge of the railing. And she's, I can tell she's much more comfortable. And <clears throat> so, <clears throat> and she's holding on to the railing still very tight. And and I looked at her, I said, you do realize that if this, if we're all the way out. I said, if this thing collapses, that railing's not saving you, right? <laughs> that probably didn't help. That was, a, that was a jerk thing to say. My folks came to visit me for the weekend and to watch my daughter's final choir performance. My vibes were dying, man. They're all about working as slaves to make money. I used to think making income like that, but 20, there's something else in here making moves. That's right, dude. That's right. So, you know, hey, what's up, Mike Scott? So, so we, um, <laughs> what a confidence builder. 
So, well, listen, so like third time we, we, we go out there, I think we went out on the glass. It was every time somebody came to Vegas, we were like, come on, let's go out to the Grand Canyon. It's only two hour drive from there. So, um, <laughs> next time just rent a donkey. So, so, um, you know, the third time she went out and it was, she was way more comfortable, like barely holding onto the rail, you know, she knew it. And then, you know, like her mother came out and visited us and, and she was afraid as well. But my, my wife's like, come on mom. And she walks right on out there and she's like, no fear at all of it. No fear at all. So think about that from the moment, the very first time. So as we do things that we're afraid of and we get through it and it all turns out okay, we start building that confidence. And as that confidence grows, we become more and more and more comfortable and able to attack what it is that we were afraid of. And then sometimes you, you get through all that and you look back and you're like, what was I so afraid of? And it doesn't matter. What you were afraid of is what you were taught by somebody else probably. You were probably given a healthy dose of fear by, by a parent or a, a teacher or, a, or somebody else. It wasn't because you fell off of the glass skywalk at the Grand Canyon all the way to the canyon floor and lived to think about it again, right? That's not what happened. So what's the fear? What's the fear? What's the fear of, of you know, people, people panic, literally have panic attacks on airplanes, What's the fear? The fear is dying. Well, the worst thing that's gonna happen to you in life is you're gonna die. And you're guaranteed, the moment you're born into this world, that that's actually going to occur. So, like, what else is there to be afraid of? You're gonna die. So, okay, if it, it may be in an airplane, it may be, my, my brother, we, we played this golf course today and he told me that a year ago, literally like almost exactly one year ago, he was playing the same exact course and, and a guy that he was, was, you know, teamed up with that him and his buddy were out there. The, this guy on the 16th green was walking off the green and literally with my brother right there, dropped dead of a heart attack. Guy died of a heart attack on the 16th green. Well, off the, off the fringe of the 16th green. And so, like, like, we can learn so much from kids. Things we have packed away, forgotten, felt. Right. Remembering is liberation. I agree. Um, I'm finding out now that fear rises up at every level I'm achieving. And I have to. So, so you have to break through it. That's it, man. And the only way, like, this dude died of a heart attack playing golf. That's not a bad way to go. I mean, seriously, at least you didn't, you know, drown at the bottom of a, a lake or well, I don't know, but I mean, is there a good way to die? I don't know, but like, you know, that's the thing is you're going to die. We all die. What else is there to be afraid of? What else is there? So, you know, Think about the conversations you have with yourself when you're, you know, I was telling my brother, like, dude, when you, when you step up to the, the, the golf ball, man, have positive conversations with yourself. Don't have any negative conversations. It doesn't matter what you did on the last hole. And he was eagling and birdieing crap like crazy, you know, and I'm, I'm out there just like, whatever, I don't care. I just get up and hit the ball. I don't even take practice swings. He's like, dude who does that? And I'm like, me, I'm not going to waste practice swings. What if that was my best shot? And I just wasted it on a practice swing. I'm just going to get up and hit the ball, man. And that what we're here for. I didn't know we were here to practice. So like, I don't do, you know, I don't, and I don't have negative or, you know, I have positive conversations mostly when I'm, when I'm, when I'm playing golf. I'm not a hacker, man. I mean, on this course, it's been two years since I played and I shot a 99 today. Like I said, I may have had a couple of foot wedge shots in there that we didn't count. But anyway, so, um, you know, like the, the things that you are, the, there's the things that are stopping you 
from any level of success in life, any level of success. It amazes me. I've had, I've talked to so many, so you're a hacker. Well, I, dude, I'm not a professional, that's for sure. But, you know, I've had conversations with people about doing live streams for their business. And like, dude, go live on Facebook, go live. Your, your customers, your potential customers, patients, clients, whatever, they want to hear from you. They're not sitting around thinking, geez, I hope Dr. So-and-so goes live tonight and talks about breast implants or, or goes live tonight and talks about the, the benefits of good dental hygiene. You know, But if you do go live, they're going to watch you. They're going to listen. Decisions can be like playing chess with yourself. Keep it positive. There is a time clock. There is. That's right. Brian says, usually when we are afraid, we don't control our imagination. Control your thoughts and imagination. Yes. Kevin I says, yes, I asked your advice on going live. Yeah. And, and, but, but dude, I've, I've talked to so many people like Kevin, you went out, Kevin just ran for, um, for, uh, Congress and, and, you know, like, like you went out and you did it. That's the thing. You did it. You called me that morning on the final day of the push for your campaign and, and, and asked me about some things and, and, but you did it. There are so many freaking people. And I'm going to tell you something. If you would have done it every single day throughout the entire campaign, the results may have been a little bit different. But like, you know, there are people that are afraid to go live. They are literally afraid to do what I'm doing right now. And I can relate to that. I mean, I can. I was terrified the first time I went live. I was. And anybody that tells you they're not afraid or they weren't ever afraid of going live, or they're full of crap, man. They're, they're, they'll they're lie to you about other crap, too. It's, it's just the way that it is. But if you go live and you do it enough, it's like going out on the glass skywalk at the Grand Canyon. First time can be a bit unnerving. I'm not going to lie. Even for me, and I'm not afraid of heights, really. After the first time, it's easy. It's right. That's right. But, you know, like, it, it's it's very, very... That I was. That's where I start the going live journey. Right. Exactly. So, but when you, when you do, when you do start the, the journey of facing your fears, and look, I don't care how old or young you are, you've been facing your fears your entire life. <laughs> Whether you realize it or not, whether you think you've done it successfully or not, does not matter. You have done it successfully. You've confronted those fears. The fear of walking into kindergarten the very first day. You were terrified. Everybody is. Maybe first grade, second grade. But by the time you get to, to, to you know, certain level of, of going to school, you know, eh, whatever. I don't care. Like, I, I hated school personally, so... You don't want to go to your deathbed wondering what if. Face your fears. That's it, dude. That's it. You got to face your fears. You got to face them. And, and when you're facing them, have the right conversations with yourself. Jerry Acuff, I interviewed Jerry Acuff the other day on my show. And, and he talked about a, a book called um, uh, Psycho-Cybernetics. And that's what it's the whole thing's about. And, and it's about having, you know, learning how to change the conversations you're having with yourself. Because the only difference between me and somebody like Grant Cardone or Donald Trump or, or Mark Cuban or, or Oprah, the only difference is the conversations that we have with ourselves. Not the conversations you're having with other people. Anybody can go out and be all happy and positive and, and, you know, like, Hey, well, yeah, it is incredible. Jerry is a, is a very, very successful, very, very successful <laughs> calves are up. Dude, I don't care. <laughs> I don't, I truly don't care. I hate basketball. I love playing basketball. I have a, I, I have a basketball court in the side. But I I hate watching it. I don't like. I'd rather watch paint dry. Like I'd rather paint the walls, and and watch them dry than watch basketball. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> One minute left. Oh yay! Go Cavs. So 
you know, but like, I forget what I was saying now. Oh, the, the, um, that, that book, it's, it's literally about, you know, ch changing the conversations that you have with yourself. When you can change the conversations that you have with yourself and the context of those conversations and learn how to make everything positive, as positive as can be. It's not always going to be that way. Amina, mommy, what's up? Deborah Lee Ann Smart, all the way from down under in Australia. Amin is all the way from right down the road in Kansas. <laughs> what's up, man? So, so um, anyway, that's I, I. I just like I want. I, I really want to encourage people. Jason Hallen, my brother. How you doing, man? Good to see you. And, you know, I just want to encourage people to learn how to change the conversations you have with yourself. When you can change those conversations. Oh, my dear God, it's Clarence Thomas. What is going on, Clarence Thomas? Bro, it is good to see you, man. Are you in, are you in Iraq right now? Where are you, man? Anyway, so, so, um... You know, just change the conversations you're having with yourself. Learn how to do that. And, and you know, it's very difficult to learn how to do these things on your own. Get somebody to help you. Get a coach. Get, a, get that book that I was just talking about. Psycho-Cybernetics is phenomenal. It's a phenomenal book. You know, and read The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Read The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. Learn how to, you know, I mean, I read every single day of my life, and I have for many, many, many years. That's why I don't seem as dumb as most high school dropouts. <laughs> Dan Keller, how you doing, bro? That's that's why that, that may self education. It was Jim Rohn that said, "What was it? How did he say that a, um, a, a formal education will make you rich?" Self-education will make you wealthy, something like that. Um, you know, it, it, I, I've spent most of my life, adult life, educating myself, learning, reading, studying, growing, expanding. That's, that's what you do. So anyway, hey, I just want to hop on and say change the conversations that you have. The Waterman is in the house. Dan Kelleher. Dan the Waterman, congratulations on your new baby. Dan just had a, well, his wife had, he was there, a, a, a new baby the other day. So congratulations. Um, that's incredible. Susan Day, how are you? Rob Glow, what's going on, man? So that's it. That's all I got. Change the conversations you're having with yourself. And your life will change, I promise you. Because you are having... You are having negative conversations with yourself. Guarantee it. It might be, you know, I've heard Grant talk about this. It might be that, you know, turn the, turn the lights off. Turn the lights off. We're not, you know, you're, you're wasting money. Like, what? Like, what, what? Like a light bulb is wasting money. I, I, I don't want to live like that. I'm not living like that. I refuse to live like that. I, I just refuse. I, when I walk into a room, I want it to be lit up. I don't care if the light's on. I just don't. I'm not living in that contracted mindset. I'm not living like that ever. I will not. I refuse. To, I've, I've lived like that. I will not live like that. I will not teach my children to live like that. There is abundance everywhere. Unlimited abundance. Good lighting. You <laughs> Scarcity mindset. It is ingrained in society, man. And it's taught by, it's taught by our parents and our teachers and, and preachers and priests and, 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 and the rabbis and everything. Don't be frugal. It's unhealthy. That's right. Like, dude, you got to you got to get out of that mindset of there's limitations to what is possible. There's no limitations to what is possible. There's no limitations to what's available. It's all there already. It's just waiting for you to go get it. And me. 
all of us. It's waiting for us. So that's, that's you know, again, that's all I got. I just want to hop on for a minute. And I, it seems like I've been on here for way longer than a minute. So I'm going to go now. But I appreciate you all. Appreciate every one of you. I'm going to be on tomorrow with um, Bonnie Bruderer is coming on the show. And Bonnie is an amazing woman. Make sure that you catch the show tomorrow at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or check out the replay of it. She's amazing. You'll love her. She's amazing. So, hey, that's all I got for you tonight. I'm going to bounce. You guys have a great night. Have a great Memorial Day. And remember to stop and honor those who gave up their life that paid the ultimate sacrifice so that we could have the freedom of doing whatever we want in this country. I had a friend's wife questioning me and, and what I am doing. I said, you have no idea what I'm doing, do you? I had a friend's wife questioning me and what I'm doing. I said, you have no idea what I'm doing, do you? Bounce, look at you being hip. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm trying to be like you, bro. That's it. I'm just trying to be like you, Eric. Cody Bartlett, how you doing, man? So look, look, again, change the way that you're talking to yourself. Change those conversations. You change those conversations into 100% or 99% positive. It's like I was talking about stepping up to the golf ball, man. If you have a defeatist mentality prior to even swinging the club, you're screwed. If you're stuck in what you did on the last shot, the last green, the last fairway, the last tee box, if you're stuck there, you're screwed. Get right, right here. Get right here and then get right in the moment. And dude, just hit the ball. Just hit the ball. See your shot and hit the ball. And that applies to anything you're doing in life. See your shot, man. You gotta, you gotta visualize that shot. You gotta know where you want the ball to go. You gotta know exactly how much money you want in that account. You gotta know, you gotta visualize it. Just pull, I started to do a Happy Gilmore today. <laughs> Make the shot, that's it, dude. Just, just, just swing the damn club, go. Just go. You got to swing the club. You got to take the shot. You got, there's 100% chance that you're not going to make the shot if you're thinking, and, and you're not going to make a good shot if you're thinking about all of the screw ups you've done on any of the previous shots. I hear people talking, talking about, do you think small numbers can become big numbers? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I, I think any, no, it, Anything can become bigger for you if you change the way you're conversing with yourself about any situation, any situation. I don't care what it is. You know, obviously on the golf course, you don't want small numbers to become big numbers. <laughs> that's, that's going the wrong direction. But, you know, whatever. It's like I said, I, I wasn't even keeping score. My brother was, but I wasn't keeping score today. I was like, Dude, I have no aspiration. He's a professional golfer. I'm not. I have no aspirations, no desire to be a professional golfer in any capacity. I just don't. I enjoy the game. I go out there. I, it's the first time I've been out there in two years. So, like, I enjoy it. I just go out and I hit the ball. I just, I don't even do practice swings at all. I walk, I tee the ball up, or I walk up to the ball. I see my target, and I swing the club. I take the shot. That's it. Doug, that's right. Doug is, yeah, yeah, he's freaking unbelievable, man. He is an unbelievable golfer. So, like, and like I said to him today, dude, you, you gotta, dude, let it go. He's like, let what go? I go, whatever you're holding on to, man, let it go. You gotta let it go. Like, whatever that is, man, the conversations you're having with yourself, the negative negative stuff that, that you're, you're, you're feeding your mind, watching the news. Like, I haven't watched, I don't even, like, I don't watch the news, ever. Literally, ever, ever, never, ever, ever. 
if it gets super windy or stormy or something, I'll pull up the weather news thing and that's it. I don't even trust that most of the time because I know they're lying too. Think about the last time a, a, a meteorologist in your local market got the freaking forecast right. <laughs> like, they never get it right. Like, dude, you're a liar. You're just a liar, and you get paid to lie on freaking TV, you liar. Like, seriously, what the hell? What kind of a job is that? I used to play on this men's league baseball team with all these media guys from TV stations, and me and the 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 catcher he was he was the um he was the weatherman at this local tv station one night this is back when i used to drink i don't drink anymore but one night we all got drunk and i told him i said dude you're the highest paid liar that i know like you're a liar dude you literally get on tv and look pretty and and they pay you to lie he's like what the what are you talking about i'm like Dude, you never get the forecast right. You're not a meteorologist. What the hell is that? You went to college to learn how to be a liar. That's all you are, dude. Accept it, man. Acceptance is what, what's, what's, what's troubling you. Like, just accept that you're a liar, dude. I do. You're a liar. Anyway, so uh, he, he didn't like that very well. <laughs> but that's all right. Whatever. I mean, I, it's, it's just my opinion. They don't get it right. Like... We all know that, so forget it. Like, they don't get it right, whatever. But anyway, so look, have that's why I don't want, I just don't watch the news at all. I don't like it. I don't listen to it. I don't like people that spread the news and, oh, did you hear about what's going on with, you know, blah, blah, blah. Nope. And I don't want to hear about it. If I wanted to hear about it, I would watch the news. I don't need you to tell me about the news. I could actually, I pay for it, I could turn it on myself. I intentionally don't watch it for a reason. And that's, I don't want to hear about it. Well, yeah, but did you hear about what Hillary did? Nope, don't care. What about what, you know, Trump said? Nope, don't care. I don't care. I don't want to hear about it. You feel 100% free to go ahead and be as miserable as you want to be feeding your mind with all that negative BS. Well, how are you going to keep up with what's going on in the world? Uh, I, I guess it'll, it, they'll, they'll let me know if it's important for me to know. But like, I, I keep up just fine. I'm, I'm, you know, I do a lot of really cool things. I don't need the news to help me keep up with what's going on in the world. Because it's all a bunch of lies anyway. Best decision I made two years ago was stop. I don't watch it, dude. I don't watch it. I haven't watched it in a long time. And I I won't. I just won't watch it. It's it's all negative crap. I mean, do you realize that the they their ratings are all that's right. Cheryl Coco. Hey Cheryl. Cheryl's gonna be on the show this week. We till y'all meet Cheryl and see her. She's amazing. So, you know, like I don't I just don't um I know I don't I mean I watch like Netflix. I'll watch, you know, things on, on Netflix once in a while, but I won't watch the news. I just don't. Uh, Fox News, CNN, they're all full of crap, man. I'm not watching it. Well, how are you going to know about blah, blah, blah? I don't, I don't care. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. I need to know that what's going in because it's, it's, it's the, the whole Geigo thing, right? Garbage in, garbage out. It's that simple. Whatever you're feeding your mind with is what's going to come out. Promise you. Eventually, because it all builds up, you start viewing the world with your negative pair of glasses. Why am I so negative? Why am I feeling negative? Maybe it's because you spent an hour watching the news and all the the murder and the wars and the 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 gnashing of teeth and the. I mean, come on, dude, just stop. That's why. Ken, good segue to ask. What do you think about Tim Guide? <laughs> Dude, who's that? <laughs> who's Tim Kite? Tim Kite. Tim Kite. Why do I know? I'll, um, why do I know Tim Kite? I know that name, Tim Kite. About the line, Tim Kite. I know that name. I don't know why I know that name. Is he the? Um, is he Brian Kite's dad? 
He is, isn't he? He's the guy that that um, that does the. Yeah, I know. I think I know who. Yes, I know Tim. I know his son. I met his son actually, Brian. They have um, R two Consulting or something like that. Yeah, I know who they are. Great people. I mean, really, really, really great people. But anyway, from what I know, I don't know them like, you know, we, we don't like hang out and play golf together. Yeah, give me a call, bro. Um, so so anyway, I would um I would say that that, you know, I'm done here. <laughs> but hey, I, I just wanted to, I, I wanna say thank you and, and to everybody who's been watching my daily show, thank you for that. I, I've I've gotten so much positive feedback. Some of the people I've interviewed on the show are absolutely amazing, amazing um, they're amazing people. So, you know, I'm very, very grateful for all of the interviews. And I have, I, all week, this week is booked. I've got people booked into June. It's crazy. So I, I'm, and I'm, I'm still looking. I want to find some great, great people to interview on the show. So anyway, um, listen, thank you guys. Appreciate all of you for being on here. Um, listening to me ramble about having better conversations with yourself. I hope you guys have a phenomenal night and your day tomorrow, Memorial Day, if you're celebrating Memorial Day. Um, I hope it's a good one. Remember to stop and give thanks for those who paid the ultimate sacrifice so that you could be free in this country to, to, to literally accomplish anything that you want. Seriously. Great interviews, brother. Great way to end an evening with you guys. Have a great Memorial Day. Thank you. You do the same. You do the same. You guys all have a great night, and I will see you very, very soon. Brad French, thank you for being here, bro. Susan Day, I see your hearts there. Thank you. Love you all. Have a great night. Later.